In our last video, we looked at some of the automation levels and migration threshold settings when we create a DRS cluster. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the additional options that we can configure. And the first option is VM distribution. So with VM distribution, what I'm trying to accomplish here is to basically equally distribute the virtual machines across the hosts in my cluster. And what we're thinking about in this scenario is I may have certain VMs that are really low resource consumers and certain VMs that are really high resource consumers. So maybe I've got a bunch of web servers that are low resource consumers, but then I've got things like Exchange or SharePoint servers that are high resource consumers. What I don't want to have is a scenario where I have a lot of low resource consumers running on a single ESXi host. Like maybe I have 20 web servers running on one host, five VMs running on the other hosts in my cluster. Well, if that one host with the 20 VMs fails, then I have 20 virtual machines that go down simultaneously. And so to impact the blast radius of any individual ESXi host failure, what I may want to do is enforce a more even distribution of virtual machines across the hosts in the cluster so that the failure of a single host doesn't take down an inordinate number of virtual machines. The next setting is the maximum CPU over commitment. And this setting controls the CPU over commitment within the cluster. So what I'm essentially doing is setting a limit of how many virtual CPUs per physical CPU on my hosts. So for example, if I were to enable this feature and say the ratio had to be one to one, that means for every virtual CPU I create on a virtual machine, I have to have one corresponding physical CPU within my cluster. So if I were to make the ratio something like four to one, that means for every four virtual CPUs I create, I have to have at least one physical CPU in my cluster. And so I'm probably not going to go with something like a one-to-one -one ratio here because frankly, that really defeats the purpose of a lot of the benefits of virtualization. The goal here is to say, hey, I've got many virtual machines sharing a set of physical hardware and I get these efficiencies of scale and I get to share hardware across many VMs. Well, if I'm doing a one to one ratio, I can't do that. I've got to have one physical CPU for every single virtual CPU that I create. So I'm not really consolidating the way I would be if I made this ratio something a little bit more aggressive, like five to one or 10 to one or 20 to one. So now that we understand how to enable this feature, there's some important things to understand about it. Let's say that we make this over commitment ratio 50 to one. And so now as we power on virtual machines, those virtual machines will only be allowed to power on if they do not violate this CPU over commitment ratio. So that's just something to be aware of when you enable this. The other thing that I just want to mention is that CPU over commitment is not enforced during times of a high availability failure. So let's say that an ESXi host fails and 30 or 40 virtual machines go down. Those virtual machines are going to be able to boot up on other ESXi hosts, even if they violate this CPU over commitment ratio. So that's good news that if a host failure occurs, those ratios are momentarily ignored to allow these virtual machines to boot up on the remaining ESXi hosts. Now, one final note, what if I want to put a host into maintenance mode? So let's say I have four hosts in my cluster and maybe I'm near the maximum of this over commitment ratio on all four of those hosts. Well, if I try and put one of those hosts in the maintenance mode, DRS is going to attempt to migrate those VMs to the remaining hosts. And if this ratio is going to be violated as a result of moving those VMs, it won't be able to place that host into maintenance mode. 
So CPU over commitment is a nice little feature that allows me to basically set a maximum of the CPU over commitment that I'm willing to do. But it does come with some constraints that we want to be aware of before we enable it on our cluster. Now, so far, everything that we've talked about was available in vSphere 6.7. None of these features are new in vSphere 7. Now, we had a lesson on this topic in the resource management section of this course. We went through exactly what scalable shares are. But just as a quick reminder, if I enable this feature, what's going to happen is when I create resource pools within this cluster, I'm not going to have to worry about equally distributing virtual machines across those resource pools. Scalable shares are going to essentially normalize the share values on a per VM basis. And if you need a refresher on this, go back to the resource management section and take a look at the scalable shares lesson.